Okay, so we have uh, we have our standard crutches here. So this would be an assistive device, generally that's used for folks that need to go up and down stairs, and also for individuals that are pretty strong and pretty mobile. Um, you don't see a lot of folks that have fractured their hip from a fall and are in their late 70s that are using crutches, but that still um, that does happen every now and then. Um, generally, it's the skateboarder that fractured their ankle that needs to be off that ankle and non weight bearing for a while. You'll see I'm kind of adjusting something here right now. See how um, these guys are at different heights right here so I can adjust where someone holds on here. The other thing that I can adjust is uh, down here are the heights and this one only goes up to 5 foot 10 so this is essentially for someone that you're kind of gauging from five foot ten all the way up to five foot two and then there's essentially a pediatric set that would be smaller and a, a larger adult set okay so I'm gonna let's see adjust I'm gonna actually leave this one where it is and I'm gonna adjust this one So ideally, again, with the handhold, I want about a 15 degree bend with my arm. So I'm great with my handhold here with this one. I'm still way too short with, with um, where it needs to fit as far as um, in my armpit. Usually what we'll do is we'll go six inches out and forward, okay? And then I should be able to slip two fingers in my armpit, okay? So when I'm teaching someone how to walk on crutches, they're not resting their arm on the crutch here because that'll compress the axillary nerve. They're actually being able to push up a little bit and able to keep about a two finger width here. So let's fit you here. Come on up here, Andy. How tall are you? Five two. Five two, excellent. So we're gonna go down to the five foot two mark. I'm gonna have any go here and then I want you to go six foot inches out and six foot um, forward and out to the side okay and so what we're doing is we're seeing uh, that's a little bit it's a little bit too tall because I can get too many fingers here and that's too long so you actually need a pediatric set of walkers so whew. So you're filming. you're filming. So now we got Coach Johnny, and, and third time's a charm here. John, how tall are you? Five, six, and three quarters. Five, six, and three quarters. We're going to round you up. Yeah. Who are the biggest liars in the world? Uh, I don't know. Guys that are five foot eleven. Oh. Okay. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Rock and roll. Okay. So I like this. Actually, ends up being a little bit high. Go ahead and hold on to that. We're going to come, we're going to come, go ahead and keep your feet where they're at. We're going to go six inches out and forward. Okay. And so I think that we were a little bit high here and we got too much of an elbow bend. So hang tight. Bring it down one notch. Let's bring, let's see what that looks like. Okay. Good. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. John, how does that feel there? Good. So, all right. Okay. Now, when you hold it, the crutches allow give you lateral support, so you're kind of off this way a little bit, and you're not resting your armpit down. You're using your tricep muscle to stay tall there. I'm gonna adjust the other one so that it's the same height. People know immediately. Not so much with crutches, but with a front wheel walker, if you've adjusted it off. Um, with a uh, front wheel walker, you'll be walking on a tripod. With crutches, you would just be walking around in circles one direction if you make one side too short.
Yeah, have you seen that happen before? So you walk around in a circle. So if I put this down at like three foot tall, you just end up walking around in a circle there. Okay. Here we go. Peter? Dad, dad's not going to let him out of that. Okay. So let's have you go. Let's have you go up, Paul. I'm going to actually be um, going to use my assistive device for safety. Have you kind of face over this way. My goodness, this guy's a mobile guy for someone that's on crutches. Okay. So, John, I'm going to actually try to coach you through some different types of gait. Go ahead and walk with the crutches. We know that you're fine. Woo! Check that board go. So that's an interesting pattern. I don't know that that's orthodox. Now what I want you to do is pretend your left leg is the bad leg and swing that one through. Don't let it, don't let it land on the ground. There you go, there you go, there you go. Swing through, swing through. Good, so that's a swing through, great. Go ahead and go back the other direction. So keep going that same thing. So John now is, uh, uh, Non-weight bearing on his right leg is what he's demonstrating here. Now, don't rest your arm pits down. Keep your your arms strong. There, come back our direction. Swing that swing that right foot or left foot through. Good. John's weight non-weight bearing on his left side. There's some balance issues that are associated to using a front wheel walker. Okay. Now let's say that um, that uh, John is partial weight bearing. I'm going to give a demonstration of this one. I'm going to. Go ahead and, and we'll not use, but if I were partial weight bearing on my right foot, I'd come here and, okay, and see how the crutches, when I lift on my uh, left foot, I'm using my arm to bring that forward. So, so forward with a crunch, down here, okay, and I'm just barely touching down on that right leg, okay. I could go with a swing through. These crutches are painfully short for me right now. Okay. Or we can do the four point gate that we were talking about before with the lost train crutches where I go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Painfully slow. Folks don't use that four point gate very often. Okay. Um, I'm gonna wheel back here Let's see, lost strand crutches. Let's see, I see folks really boogieing along with these guys. But essentially, you could do, I could do the non weight bearing if I needed to. Or generally, I see folks using a four point gate, and, but they're pretty quick, or, or a two point gate. So, four point gate being one, two, three, four. This is a two point gate. One, two, one, two, one, demonstrate the other way. One, two, one, two would be uh, our two point gate. Um, let's roll in right along. Probably the next step up would be using a, um, a front wheel walker. Okay, and this one, ironically, it's not a front wheel walker, but a four wheel walker. So there are a few different types of walker devices, a few different basic types of walker devices. Um, the most basic one will have no wheels on it, okay? And it'll be a pickup walker, okay? So you can imagine that if I took off the wheels and I had to use this as a walker, and it's way too short for me, I'd have to pick it up and then move into it. Pick it up move into it. So that's going to be the slowest and the most stable. The next one that we would have would have these two back wheels would not be on and it would be my front wheel walker. Okay. And I could still slide it around. Okay. And then, and then we get to four wheel walkers and fancy four, four wheel walkers with seats that are, they are the most mobile and the least, um, I would say, the least stable of the group, the four-wheel walker ones, because this one has wheels that pivot, allow me to turn, allow me to put on the brake, have a seat, eat my lunch. A lot of them have baskets below. I might carry my oxygen tank or groceries or whatever uh, I need to carry around with me for this. So these are, um, this is a Cadillac. 
This is the Toyota Corolla bunkers. We, as we move down the list, we have um, some other types of walkers. Uh, one being a, this is truly a front wheel walker. You see the wheels on the front and a little stability pad on the back. Um, folks, some of the time, get things that actually, a little cut that allows it to slide or tennis balls, you see. This one actually is meant for more stability, so it, it doesn't have a cut that slides. It actually has a, it's made of a rubber surface and it has a little brake that adds when you, when you stop here. So, and you also see the big difference you see with this one is that you see an upper extremity support or an arm trough, as some of the time it's termed, on the right-hand side. So what I would do, this is used in two cases. One case would be for an individual who um, has, uh, has affected, like let's say they've um, had a wrist injury that has them non-weight bearing through this wrist, right? So with this, I could essentially take this out of the equation, this is all, and I can still use just the arm, okay? If the elbow is non-weight bearing, or if there's any issues with the shoulder, this is a no-go, okay? But if I have someone who has a wrist injury, obviously something like this is gonna serve me better than something like this that I've gotta push down through my wrist, okay? The other instance that you see this, and, and it's not unusual to have someone that had a fall that has, say, an upper extremity wrist problem and also some weight bearing precautions in their lower extremity, okay? Um, and uh, you can end up getting, uh, needing to be pretty creative in your assistive device selection or just kind of going to your default, which is a wheelchair with perhaps a leg rest. But um, we use this also a lot on individuals who've had stroke or traumatic brain injury, okay? And so if I've had someone that's had a stroke on left side of the brain, right side of their body is affected, um, they may do better initially using something like so. And so John, let's have you go ahead and come on up here again. We already got the gate belt on you. Okay, and I think this is pretty nicely fit for you, okay? Um, what we'll do is, let's go ahead, let's look at one thing here. I want you to just put your arm down there. So that's good, that's a nice little 15 degree bend. That's what we're seeing on the other side, okay? So now we have, we have John has just recently had a stroke and he has a paralyzed right upper extremity, but he's got a little bit of an ability to depress the shoulder and push down through the elbow. And just that little bit makes a huge difference for John being able to walk, okay? So essentially, generally what I'm gonna do is I am gonna jump in front of the camera. I'm gonna be on the, the weaker of those two sides. I might be working with another therapist or with an aide, but I'm gonna be stabilizing along. So we'll move the walker forward, left foot, okay? And then a little bit of help here. My oh, goodness, yeah, you're, you're like a individual we were working with earlier where we kind of bend that leg forward and bring it forward. Okay, and up and forward. Good. He can weight bear through there. Um, I'm going to have you come back in reverse. Um,